Picking up where we left off on the last one with dissociation. Um, as far as y'all are concerned, dissociation and ionization are going to be the same thing. If you choose to take AP Chemistry in a couple years, you'll learn the difference. But right now, don't worry about the difference. Ionization and dissociation are the same thing. Um, oh, and if you remember, I was talking about what it takes to make an electrolytic solution in that you need to have ions. Without ions, you don't have an electrolyte. And it doesn't matter what the ions are. They can be positive ions, they can be negative ions, they can be big, fat, heavy polyatomic ions, they can be itty bitty tiny, you know, hydrogen ions. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the number of moles of ions. So the more moles of ions that a salt will dissociate into, the better the conductivity of the solution. And this has a special name, it's called the Van Hoff Factor, um, and it's abbreviated with the letter I, and my AP guys started calling this the um, I value this year, you know, what's the I value of that salt, uh, to be able to tell who's gonna be a better conductor of electricity. So to put that point into perspective, what's gonna make a better electrolyte, NaCl or K2SO4? Well, you gotta figure out how many ions are each of these going to uh, dissociate into. So sodium chloride, when you put it into water, is going to ionize into a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. So this guy's gonna have two moles of ions per mole of salt because that's, you know, what this is, salt. Then if you have K2SO4, how many ions is that going to dissociate into? Well, you got to look and see what ions it took to make it. Obviously, we've got two potassium ions. And the sulfate, the SO4, is not going to separate into sulfur ions and oxygen ions. It's going to stay together as a sulfate ion. And the reason it's not going to separate is because these are not chemical changes. These are physical changes. So what exists over here is the same as what exists over here. They're just not put together in a traditional sense. They're kind of connected by the water molecules. Um, and so these are just physical changes. Dissolving is a physical change. And if you look at this, you see that you got two moles of potassium to one mole of sulfur, sulfate. So we're going to have three total moles of ions to a mole of salt. And so basically what that means is this guy will have an I factor of 2, while this guy has an I factor of 3. So the K2SO4 is going to be the better electrolyte as compared to NaCl. Um, and that is if we had, like, equal concentrations of these two guys. You know, if you had a concentration of NaCl that was twice that of K2SO4, well, then the NaCl would be the better conductor because then you would have two times twice the molarity, uh, which would be a 4, you know, so it would be a better conductor in that way. But if we had equal concentrations of these two salts, then the K2SO4 is going to be the better electrolyte. Now, you can have strong and weak electrolytes. The last two salts that we talked about ionize completely. That means as soon as you add salt to water, it completely breaks apart into sodium and chloride ions. But you can have some compounds that not all of them do that. When you put, in this case, hydrogen fluoride into water, some of the hydrogen fluoride separates into hydrogen ions and fluorine ions, but not all of it. And because only some of the compound ionizes, that makes the electrolytic properties of that guy weak. It's not going to have as many ions, and fewer ions means a weaker electrolyte. Now, if this guy completely dissociated, then it would have the same potential strength as this guy up here but it does not completely ionize, so not all of the compound is going to fall apart into an ion.